Tunisia. Is where it all began. The actions of one desperate man ignited a revolution at home and inspired a tidal wave of change across the Arab world. But two years after Mohamed Bouazizi set himself on fire, in what direction is Tunisia now headed? Suddenly there's more democracy. For the first time in more than four decades, the people cast ballots in a free and fair process that installed a new president and a constituent assembly. But negotiations to write a new constitution that will enshrine the country's new values seem to be moving very slowly. At issue are questions about the role of religion, the division of powers, the status of women. And at the heart of those debates is one man. To many, Rashid Khanouchi is still an uncertain quantity. An opponent of the old dictatorship, imprisoned, tortured and exiled for his views, some consider him a philosopher and a progressive Muslim thinker. Others fear his Inahda party, now the largest in the assembly, is a vanguard for the creeping Islamicization of Tunisia and that Benucci himself is secretly working for a new Islamic caliphate. As the latest riots around the Arab world were just breaking out, Anucci was visiting Doha, and he talked to Al Jazeera about democracy, Islam, and the future of Tunisia. Rashid Al Ghanoushi, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you, Boru. We meet today on a day when the U.S. ambassador to Libya has been confirmed dead, as a consequence of, of violence and anger, which seems to be again rooted in religious difference. When you, as a political Islamist, see this kind of conflict and this kind of a confrontation, what, what runs through your mind, first of all, when you hear news like this? First of all, it's uh, sad news, very sad for, for me, because uh, this e event can uh, give service only to the anti-Islam, the anti a good relation between Islam and the world, between Islam and Americans, between Islam and the West. So, uh, who they uh, plan this uh, crime with intention or without intention, they destroy the dialogue between Islam and the West and uh, they uh, help the anti the Islam Islamophobia in the world. What we have seen today is violence on the back of a movie that was made about Islam by non-Muslims. And the reaction to it has been that this is not allowed. And so those forces of violence and terrorism that you just spoke of will be regarded in America, particularly because it was the US ambassador that died here, will be regarded uh, as natural parts of Islam, and this is a, an accusation that's been thrown at Islam a lot in America already. Surely events like this will only reinforce that hatred. Is that fair? It's not fair to... Uh, uh, to but is it justified? I mean, when we see this kind of extreme reaction... I haven't any justification for these deeds. It's crime. There will be moderates even in America today who will be saying, look, this is clear evidence that in Islam, the first reaction is always violence and anger? Violence is not uh, a solution. It's part of the problem. We cannot solve our problems. We have some problems, many problems between Muslim and uh, some Western countries, but uh, the violence is not the solution. It can uh, increase the problems uh, and difficulties and uh, push things toward the war between nations, between religions. Uh, it's, and it's not, uh, it's not goes in uh, the Islamic politics. Islam would like to uh, implement the peace in the world, to guarantee the peace and uh, to, uh, to make war only against who threat the Muslim world, who uh, invade our countries. 
but uh, threat threatening a diplomat, it's, uh, it's foolish. But yet again and again, we see this kind of behavior. We saw Salman Rushdie being persecuted for words on paper. We saw the Danish newspapers having the same, invoking the same reaction for cartoons on paper. And this now, a film. Again, I say to you, the, the, the people in America will be saying, look, here is proof. Islam is about violence, even under any provocation. Islam uh, itself, it's uh, threatened by many sides in the world who try to burn the, Cor the Quran. Mm. Uh, he make, uh, he encourage people, encourage the hatred between races, between Islam and the West. But uh, we have to condemn these acts who uh, um, harm the Islamic faith, who try to, uh, uh, to make crimes against Islam, against, Islam, against uh, the Muslim. Why they, did, why they did that? So we are against this reaction, but uh, we, uh, we have to be against the actions also. The actions of the filmmakers. Film, film, film is makers and uh, who burn the Quran, who uh, try to harm the Islamic uh, faith. The draft Tunisian constitution, which is currently under debate, proposes within it that um, it should be a criminal offense to, and I think I'm quoting here, anyone who attacks that which is sacred. Is it the right way to go about it, though? Can you encourage respect for religion and other people's beliefs by criminalizing yes. the actions of yes. some people? We have to criminalize any acts against others' religion. To protect our religion, we have to protect others' religion also. But you see what I mean? I mean, as a, as a just a, a purely philosophical question, can one encourage tolerance by imposing criminality on somebody else's belief. The tolerance is very important in, in the society. And we, ca we can uh, tolerate each other. To make any offense to others' religion, it's like uh, to make offense against yourself. yourself. In the Quran, uh, the Quran order us to respect other religion, to let other people of the other religion respect our uh, ours. I understand that these areas of, of law and uh, and principle may be quite complicated, and obviously English may not be the most appropriate language to discuss this in. So please yes. uh, answer in Arabic, and uh, perhaps we can be a, a little bit more um, comprehensive in the description of what's going on. What place then do you think Sharia has in the system of law and government in Tunisia? And how will the constitution reflect that? Sharia mana The Islamic Sharia and, uh, law is Sharia mysteriously conceived. Islam. It is another meaning Islam of Islam, Islam, simply for the reason that Islam, Islam is a Ibadah. faith it is rituals, it is a set of rules and ethics. Therefore, it is misinterpreted as a penal code. It is, in its essence, justice, brotherhood, mercy, and equality among people. It is also charity and well-being of mankind. Above all, the Islamic Sharia law is not originated in Tunisia. It is not another party that will restore Sharia law to Tunisia. It is a Muslim state already by the stipulation of the constitution, which st states that Tunisia is a, a state whose religion is Islam and language is Arabic. And the Tunisian laws are mostly derived from Islam. 
Sharia did not leave, did not leave Tunisia in order to restore it. With respect to the development of the laws, it should reflect the mainstream opinion and what all what is crystallized among the main stream, including principles and rules, will be reflected and expressed and deliberated in the parliament. We are not a religious authority. We are calling for a civil state and the representative elected by the people and those parliamentarians will reflect the various and different opinions among the people. We have no agenda or intention to impose any on the Tunisian which comes against their will. What you mean in the sense of the intent, the ethos, the desire to achieve a certain state of mind, I suppose, behind the way you just, just described Sharia law. But in itself, the vagueness that that encompasses and the openness to interpretation that is necessarily a part of the system you've described is difficult in a nationwide legal system, is it not? I mean, we have seen countless examples of misunderstanding, misinterpretation, conflict of opinion. Is Sharia good enough to deal with that on a daily basis? Should there not be uh, a more precise, a more exact, and a more rigid system that can be fairly and equally implemented? As you are aware, there is no church in Islam. I mean an authority to interpret, to interpret and impose. In other ways, we have the freedom of discretionary opinions. We cannot a bit, we cannot limit Islam as if it is reflected or expressed by a spokesman. Therefore, we have different discretionary opinions by scholars and jurists. These discretionary opinions may differ from Iraq to Tunisia to Egypt, and the residents of each region react with the religion read and interpret and comprehend the Islam as a, as a religion and their interpretation of the prophetic uh, traditions. There is nothing called ready-made Sharia law that can be imposed in a certain fixed manner everywhere. Sharia law is a human, human discretionary opinions by those jurists but, and so scholars who is, will react with the point. religion. I mean, human discretionary opinion will vary from human to human. We're not talking about the differences between Sharia in Iran or in Tunisia. Within Tunisia itself, from judge to judge, discretionary opinion is not a basis for sound law, is it? One judge can't decide one thing and another another thing on a similar topic. In a modern state, this is possible. In the past, the judges were exercising their discretionary opinions. Once they are confronted with a certain case, it is studied and the judge refers to the holy book, Quran, the tra prophetic traditions in order to infer the judgment. At this time, it is more complicated. Not all the judges can exercise their discretionary opinions. And therefore, the law has become more organized in uh, uh, judiciary indexes, uh, journals that are handed down by specialized councils, and here the council is the parliament, therefore the judge is not exercising his discretionary opinion, but only in the application of law that is already enacted by an elected parliament. Let me come to a specific case, a concrete case, and uh, get your opinion on how this would happen. Habib Aghribi, an Olympic athlete, a medal winner, condemned at home by a certain section of society for being inappropriately dressed at the Olympics. She comes home, which judge will she face and whose opinion will she face? Will she be condemned for wearing what dress is appropriate at the Olympics or should she be condemned 
for wearing what dress is inappropriate to a certain section of Tunisian society. I am not aware that she was referred to court because of the uniform she was wearing. I don't think she's been referred to court. She was just condemned in public by certain sections. Some people liked her outfit, others did not. And people vary and different opinions. We call on all and one that the outfit expresses the prevailing values of the society. We do not interfere of people's daily lifestyle, what they eat or wear. The state does not interfere in personal affairs. It is a more societal case. It is up to the society who should deliberate, discuss the issue, may reach a consensus or differ. It is a matter of public opinion. Right. My, my point being here that public state. opinion is surely not a good guide for uh, a basis or a basis for law within the country as a whole because public opinion is very fickle and is not uh, uniform. Everyone has different opinions. How can you base a system of law on that idea. It is elections. We have the elected parliament uh, members, and those members are responsible for ratifying laws. What remains outside the laws remains a free for debate, discussions among thinkers, intellectuals, and uh, think, uh, thinking clubs. It's a matter of personal freedom. Let me ask about the, the bigger picture then of, of women's rights, because that seems to be one of the big issues still under discussion. The president said only recently uh, that controversial statements such as women complement men must be rejected. This is part of your platform. What, in your, uh, in your mind, is the role of women in a new Tunisia? This has no relation to the role of women. The draft constitutions emphasize the equality between genders on more than one occasion. It is a matter of consensus. It is agreed upon by both the Islamist and seculars. The matter of complement is another meaning of equality. Man com complement woman and woman complement man. It is a matter of family, it has nothing to do with uh, any other meaning that it is in conflict with equality. It is another added meaning that man needs woman and woman needs man. It is an additional meaning of equality, not a contradiction. However, opponents and adversaries to Islamists have fabricated this problem to distort the stance adopted by Islamists towards women. In the West, there is constant refrain uh, about the problems of extremist Islam and Al-Qaeda uh, attempting to create a, a global caliphate and uh, the problems that that brings up in the minds of the Westerners. Where, where do you see a resolution uh, of those two differing ideas? Terrorism and radicalism cannot build, it ruins. Al-Qaeda was not disputed, it did not build anything, it ruined Iraq, Somalia. Terrorism does not build, it wrecks, it ruins. What builds is moderation. It is dialogue, therefore we are against terrorism and we believe that Islam and Muslims are the most affected, the biggest victims of terrorism. It is Islam and Muslims that are victims to terrorism. We believe that the victory gained by the Arab Spring is that they are victory against terrorism. Islam is now linked to revolution, dignity, freedom, human rights, human values. However, Al-Qaeda linked Islam to terrorism, enmity among people, to the degree that a Muslim has become standing as a symbol of terrorism worldwide. 
Okay, one final question. I'd just like to go back to the beginning and, and get your answer to the question in Arabic about what we spoke earlier on, and that is the, the events in, in Libya and the killing of the U.S. ambassador there. Um, do you think that the response of the, of the Libyan people against this film was extreme or justified? I express my regret and grief over the demise of the U.S. ambassador who is in an Islamic country. Islam protects diplomats. The Prophet, may God's peace be upon him, never killed an ambassador or messenger, even the, the messenger of Persia who offended the Prophet did not uh, harm him. He stated that messengers and diplomats can never be harmed or injured. Any assault against them is an assault against the law, against the religion, and against the Libyan people themselves. And also it is an offense to the revolution. There is no doubt that this bad movie has offended Islam as a religion, and the United States should have acted and should have acted to end this direct campaign against Islam. I did not watch it myself. I heard that it was funded by the Zionists, by Israel, and it is the religious bigots and fanatics who perpetrated this rift. I heard, uh, it is reported that this film is offending Islam. There must be an international law providing protection to all religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, a law to protect all the sanctities. However, this violent reaction is not justified. It is condemned. I'm not sure what you mean by protecting religion. Is it? not permissible for a non-Muslim to discuss Islam or for a non-Jew to discuss Judaism? It is a very good question. Discussing religion, discussing the freedom of thinking, the freedom of expression, the freedom of scientific search and research, it is a matter uh, held as sacred by Islam and our religion has answers that refute all the claims against the religion. It was accused of be being then myths of our ancestors. However, Islam has come with proofs that refute any claims. I repeat, any free thinking, free search, thinking about the existence of God, the existence of holy books, the existence of prophets, it is permissible. It is, Islam is a religion of freedom, freedom of thinking and expression. However, we cannot and we do not accept any offense or mockery against other sanctities, other religions, or other sects. There is a big difference. Orientalists uh, reflect that it, there is a discipline in science specialized in the religion, examining and discussing the origins and principles of Islam, and no one has denied them. In the past, discussions in the past in the royal courts used to take place between the scholars of Islam and uh, other clergymen. There is a big difference betwe between academic scientific discussions and debates and between taking other sanctities as mockery and offending them. Islam urges Muslims not to offend or smear other religions or sanctities so as to avoid any res negative response. There is a difference between scientific research, intellectual debates, and offending and making or ridiculing other religions or sanctities. Rashid Afghanushi, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you.